Yesterday in class, we were looking at different soil samples and we were in particular, we were looking at these three soil samples and I hope you can see on camera here the different range of colors that we have. So this one is the lightest, it appears to me is it's the lightest. This is the next darkest. And this one here is really, really dark brown. So we had a bit of a discussion about the different soils. So this one here is from a silage field. It only gets synthetic fer fertilizers and slurry. It's not grazed at all. There's no solid manure going on on that ground. Uh, this one here is a lay. It has been recently reseeded in the last four or five years. Uh, again, synthetic fertilizers and slurry, no farmyard manure. And this one here is from a dairy farm. This is grazed regularly. It hasn't been receded in quite a long time, but it only gets farmyard manure and no synthetics. So it gets farmyard manure around September and then they strip graze it. Uh, really nothing else, maybe a bit of slurry, but that's about it. So I kind of am left with the observation that we have three different colored soils. They all receive different type of fertilizers, either synthetic with A and B, slurry with A and B, except the difference between A and B is B has cattle grazing on it and A does not. C has cattle grazing on it all the time, gets no synthetics and only gets um, farmyard manure and a slight bit of slurry uh, if needed. So that's my observation. I'm now going to go and have a look at research about soil color um, and farmyard manure or uh, and synthetics. Now coming to my research. So I Google searched soil color. The first one that came up was Australian government. Um, had a website and I determined that this was a reliable source of data. So I looked at the soil color and there was three colors, black, red and white. Just looking at the black one there, the black one from, it black comes from organic matter. Organic matter is something that I can measure in soil. It's one of the specified practical activities for leaving cert and it will provide me with numerical data. Um, which is very, very important. Then I had a look at Science Direct and that backed up my theory that soil co color is influenced by organic matter. So again, it, it's something that I can reference in my research section. And then I had a look at organic matter because obviously that's the thing that we're talking about. Now there is an experiment done by the Food and Agricultural Organization of, uh, of the UN, and it's looking at soil color by observation. But this type of data, although it can be completed, is subjective to the person and can be quite difficult in varied soil samples. So numerical data is something that's quite important, but just looking through their, their research, they have materials and procedures like we will have, um, but they have the limitations of the method and they say in their limitations that color is subjective and um, it would always be carried out on in, a, in comparison to a reference soil. So you'd have to have a base soil or a reference soil for you to measure your color differences and you're not really measuring because it's subjective data. Um, and they can't, they're, they're saying a, well, another limitation is these reference soils are not easy to find. The last piece of research I looked at was from AgriLand. And I was looking at the title organic matter content, key to determinant of soil health. And it was produced in 2023 on February of 14th and I have the person who wrote it so if I need to reference it I have the person who wrote it the date that it wrote, that it was wrote on written on or published on and it is a quite recent document so it will be up to date so just scanning down through it then 
down to something that interests me. Farmyard manure contains large quantities of complex organic carbon. A significant proportion of this will be soluble in the soil. This in turn encourages the production of those microbes which can actually manufacture humic substances. So farmyard manure is one of the additives on my soil samples that I'm using. It's directly linking it to the organic matter content and organic carbon content, but then it introduces uh, a, a new variable or something for further study, which is microbes. So once I complete this experiment, if I wanted to expand my research on the fat on the types of fertilizers and how they influence soil i could do the microbial count or i could look at the microbes in the soil in these soil samples as further study The first step in determining the percentage organic matter in a soil sample is to dry the soil sample out at 105 degrees Celsius until mass remains constant. How I do this is I place the evaporating basin onto the scales and you can see here it reads a 41.93 grams. I just hit zero again and center it back to 0 0.00 and then I put my sample in. So I'm going to place sample A in the oven at 105 degrees Celsius. I'm going to put sample A in the first slot, sample B in the second, sample C in the third. I have their weights or their masses, and I'm going to, in about half an hour, take the samples out and weigh them again. Once the mass remains constant, then I know the sample has dried out and is ready to use in the next step. An interesting note is I could calculate the percentage water content of the soil sample and I would expect it to be higher in the soil that is darker because I think that soil has a higher organic matter content. I have removed these soil samples from the oven where their mass remain, when their mass remained constant. And it's interesting to note that these soil samples were sitting out on the bench for about two days before I got to put them in the oven. But if we have a look at the results, we can see that sample A, which was a silage field, synthetics and slurry, has a percentage water content of 18.61%. B, which was grazing slurry synthetics, um, had a water retention of 26.91%. And the C, which had, um, hadn't been reseeded in 20 years, farmyard manure, no synthetics, and was being grazed in a strip grazing manner, had a water retention of 39%, even though they felt like they were dry before they went into the oven. So that just goes to show, again, furthers my theory that the darker color soil has a higher organic matter content. Moving on then, for the three experiments, I'm going to need three Bunsen burners. I'm going to need, again, my soil samples. Now, I have taken about five grams, and um, you'll see it in the results section, from each of the dry soil samples. So we have A, B, and C. And I'm going to put it over the Bunsen burner and burn off the organic matter and organic carbon in the soil. Samples A and B are already on. And I'm just going to show you on sample C, we have our safety flame. And I'm going to move the tripod over the flame. I'm not going to touch the Bunsen burner. And then I'm going to open it up so that the flame is directly below the crucible. Things that are being...
Now we come to our results. Our results, our initial mass is seen here in column C, for example, A, B, and C. Our final mass then, after we have burnt off the organic matter, is in column D. So how do we calculate, how do we do our analysis? So to calculate the mass in grams of organic matter, um, all we have to do is subtract our final mass for our, from our initial mass. And I have done that for sample A and sample B, but in sample C, I'm just going to show you a couple of things that you can do in Excel if you don't have a calculator, or maybe as we progress through our SPAs that we can perform more di difficult tasks. So in Excel, just hit the equal sign, and that tells Excel that you're about to do some calculations. So to calculate organic matter mass, I want to subtract from C8 the initial mass, I want to subtract D8, and I just hit equal sign. Now to convert that into percentage organic matter, all I have to do is I have to hit my equal sign again, and I'm going to divide my organic matter mass, the forward slash is your division sign in Excel, by my initial mass, and then I'm going to star, um, which is shift eight by 100. And that gives me 10.2%. Then if we come over to convert that into percentage organic carbon, Organic carbon is 58% of all organic mass. So I take my 10 point, I hit my equal sign again, and I'm going to multiply F8 or 10.2 by 0.58. And that will give me, oh, I'm gonna start by 0.58. Is the enter sign and that gives me 5.916% organic carbon. Then on to graphing my results. As you can see here from the previous clip, I have removed any spare rows in between my in, in between my data set. And the reason I've done that is because it, that places spaces in your graph. So this is my sample. I'm going to click on A to highlight the full row. And I'm gonna press down the control key. And I'm going to look at just percentage organic matter. And I'm gonna click on F to highlight those two rows or those two columns. And I'm gonna click on insert and graph and I just want a bar chart and here you can see I just have a simple bar chart of percentage organic matter if I want or I could try control and I could look at percentage organic matter and percentage organic carbon again using the control key highlight all columns click insert <clears throat> and graph now I have a chart title if you look along the bottom, I have a legend. Blue is organic matter, orange is organic carbon. But I'm going to add a couple of things here. I'm going to add axis titles. Okay, so here I'm going to have percentage organic or percentage, that's its unit. I might want to change, I want, might want to add, so here I'm going to have samples. I might actually want to change sample A to tell me what it contained. So I might say that's a silage field. Hit enter and that changes that. Sample B then is fertilizer and farmyard manure and sample C is just farmyard manure and then I can have my 
the label of um, samples on the bottom and then I can have chart title the percentage organic matter and percentage organic carbon now if I was doing an IAS and I was stuck if I had loads of tables then I might choose this it's always in a very good idea to include your units along the x and the y axis if i again was i might want to include my data labels now if you look at this my data labels because i haven't rounded my numbers there it looks very messy on on the actual Again, to me, this looks very messy, so I'm not going to include my table. And I can right click and copy and paste that into um, any Word document that I want. So sources of error. How long ago were the fields plowed? I never really took that into consideration and that would have a massive effect on organic matter and organic carbon in the soil. I know the silage field was plowed probably five or six years ago. Um, I know the field, sample C had, hasn't been plowed in a very, very long time and sample B, I didn't, I didn't know when the last time it was plowed. Again, were they fertilized at the same time? Did they receive the same amount of fertilizer? Um, again, I didn't control these and I should have, it should have been a controlled variable in my experiment. Again, I didn't take the soil texture prior to doing the testing to make sure that the textures of all the soils were the similar or even before they had been fertilized to see if there had been any change in texture. Uh, or samples B and C provided with the same amount of farmyard manure. You know, one of the sources of error, did I even need the silage field? Was that, was sample A, should it have been included in the data set? Because its use, its management was completely different from B and C. So for their studies from this experiment, I would look, um, I would like to see, does it organic matter affect soil texture? Does it affect drainage? Does it affect um, on the topography of a of a field? Would it cause the water to run up, run over the surface of the field, or would it, would it improve soil going down through the field, or sorry, water going down through the field? All life comes from carbon. So again, from sample C, we've seen that they have the highest organic matter content and therefore the organic carbon content. So how does that affect the microbial activity over time in a soil? And you can do this experiment quite simply by taking a soil sample and putting deionized water through it or even letting it sit in deionized water for maybe half an hour, an hour, filter it and um, putting it on an agar plate and um, even dilute it down through a series of dilutions and have a look at the microbial activity and count the number of colonies on the plate and that would give me numerical data. I could look at repeating the experiment have a repeat under lab conditions and not under farm conditions and see does that support the data that I got from the farm. Um, there's loads of things that I could do.